This video was published by mbkpinternational.com. In this video, we're going to talk about replacing the motherboard on the Guillotine XPC19 Pro paper cutter. First thing you want to do is come over here and unplug this from power. Even if your cutter's turned off, you want to unplug that from power because there's still power going through it. And you want to unplug it anytime you're messing with any part on this. And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to actually remove the six screws on this electronics compartment table, the front table here. And all you need that for that is a Phillips screwdriver. It's easier with a short Phillips on this, something like this, the short Phillips, because this is, this one can be a little bit difficult because of this display screen sticking out. If you had to and you don't got a short one, sometimes you can even get it this way, but at that angle, as long as you don't strip the head of it. But if you had to, you can remove this top crown and it's just two screws on each side of the crown. Of the, and then you can, you'd have more room to just get these here with a longer screwdriver. But basically you want to, if you have a short one, it's better. And then you, the, the three back ones and the three front ones. And once you do that, this should just slide straight out. And you can put that to the side. And what we're going to be replacing here is the motherboard. And this is the motherboard right here. It's just right in the center. And you basically got, it's pretty simple. You just got all these wires here and almost on, on the three sides of it, the front and the two sides. But um, these, all these should be marked and I'll go through that in the video. But um, the one thing you want to watch for is making sure you get these plugs back on the same order. So all you really need on this is a Phillips screwdriver. These come out, you can start unplugging these right away. And when you unplug them, it's best just to look at them. That's P7, it almost looks like a three the way they did it, but it's a P, they're usually, they should have it written on here. And if it's not written on here, you should write it on here. And you can look right on the board here, right next to this plug, there's a, it says P7. So if it's not correct, just make sure it's correct. If it's not correct, you can correct it with a, a fine tip Sharpie. Okay, and this, and one, one good thing before you start taking this, all this off, it's just a good idea before you take this board out, before you unplug anything, is take a picture of it. And that way you can see the wires coming out of here. And it just helps if you ever have any trouble. Where did this one go or where did this one go? You can just see which wires, like the red one went there, the white one went there, the blue there. You can just see where it all was before you started unplugging everything. And it's just a good idea to take a nice clear picture showing all the plugs with the wires around it. So in case you need help getting it back, back in the correct order. Because you put these on the, in the wrong order, it's not going to work. So this is P7 and the, that little P7 is right next, right in the front of that plug there on the board itself. And this one says P64 on the front of the board. It says P64. This one here is P63, and it does say P63 in front, P62, P61, and that was P5. No, that's, that P5 is right on the edge here of it right there. It's right, right about there, P5 on that one. It's not in front. Um, and you're just going to go down these. you got this one here. That's P4, and that looks like it's on the edge of it right here, too. They could change that, though. These boards do change once in a while, so you got to look for it. It could be in a different place, these numbers. So just confirm it and look for it. Looks like a P34, and that's what it is in the front. 33, P32, P31, and P2. And yeah, there's a P2, and those are 31, 32, 33, 34. Okay, and this one, obviously, there's no other place to plug it, but it is P1, and it's off to the side there. That's a big plug, so there's only one place for it to go. Then all you have left is these, these here. And there's basically um, nine of them, and there should be an order. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This hole here is just a spacer hole, so, so it will be empty. And if you count them on this, it's actually what? That's number seven, so this is actually number eight hole, but since it's not used, this will be the eight one here. If you have a screw there with no wire plugged into it, it's best just to remove that screw so that, that way you know nothing goes there. And this all because I'm gonna go ahead and start unscrewing all these with a felt screwdriver and, we'll, and um, we'll pause this video and start back when I get a little more done here. Okay, I got all these um, screws, so you can just kind of sometimes it's easier to, to have this off, so you can slide this out like this and just take it completely off. But um, we'll just start taking, we'll just leave it like that. I think I know, just make sure all these all these screws are loose four or five turns each. And the next thing I'm doing is I'm gonna take these um, four screws that hold the board into place off. We'll go ahead and pause it and I'll go ahead and take those off. Okay, I got these completely loose. They're still there, but I, I turned them and they're completely loose from the screw hole in the frame, all four of them. And all these 
nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one are all loosed. So basically, try to just get these out of the way as much as possible. And these, push them to the side. And then I'm just going to lift straight up, and all these should just slide out because I got them all loose. And you can see these all slide out. Pretty simple. And you take your board up. Now it will, sometimes the spacers, will, plastic spacers will still be on the screws. In this case, they all stay down there, and you can see that these are loose plastic spacers. Just find all four of those. Here's that one, I and mean, here's one here. Okay, that, that's basically it. Let's get it. Let's take this and get a new board. Okay, in this case, I'll be putting the same board back in, but in your case, you'd be getting your new board now, and you'd take these screws out of the old one, the four corner screws, and you'd put the four screws back into your new board before replacing it. So you get your four screws out of your old one and put them into your new one. And then this uh, this is um can get a little bit tricky in a way, not too big of a deal, but these plastic spacers, just to put them on here. If you have trouble with it, you can use like a little Vaseline inside these to keep them there if you want. But it's really not that hard if you do what I show you here. You gotta keep it sideways like this and then get them all started. Keep it sideways, if you turn it over, they're just gonna fall off. And basically all I do is I, I get my finger and I put pressure that way on it. And another finger and I put pressure and go that way on just a little pressure on each way I get my thumb and I hold it here and I do the same thing with this side put pressure that way and that way and now I can turn it upside down then they're not going to fall off as long as I keep the pressure on them so basically all I'm going to do is I'm going to put this down while I'm holding pressure on these to keep these plastic spacers from falling off you got to make sure these plastic spacers are on there because it prevents this board from touching metal the prongs underneath this board and shorten out so these plastic spacers have to be there and your base is just going to come down here and I'm going to set these two down once I get them set these two on this side here once I get those two set down on the on the frame then I can slide it over and put the other two down and I can let go of it so I'm just going to get it down in an area where it's free of wires and then I just put it down on, on the on the frame so now those two are good and I'm just going to slide it over here as much as I can out of the way of the wires and I'm going to put the other side down as I was putting as I was putting in inward pressure on all four posts to keep those plastic spacers from falling off. Now they're down and they're not going to fall off. Now you just got to slide the board around to find these holes. And you can kind of see where they are, the holes for the for these corner screws. And so I'm just going to slide it over to to it. And you can see pretty much where they are. You can just find one. Once you find one, you can just screw it in. Okay, that one's that one's in. I'm not going to tighten any of them down until I get all four screwed down. So basically, I'm going to. I may have to shift it around to find the holes, but but once you get one, you can you can shift it however you need to to find all the holes. And I'm just going to go ahead and, and tighten these other four down now. Okay, I got the four screw four corner screws um on snug tight. Now I'm just going to start putting these wires back on in order. And again, you can if you took a picture like you should have, you can check your picture to confirm it after you're done. But I see P7 there on the board. And this is, you know, again, see, you got to check these numbers because that almost looks like a three to me. But it was a seven. You could have, I should have fixed it a little better with a Sharpie. But this is the tricky part. You just got to make sure you get all these prongs in. This is a three-prong hole, and there's three prongs there. You don't want to go off the side and miss one or something like that. You just you get them on. They're going nice and easy. Just make sure none of these wires back out. Make sure they're all plastic there. You don't see them backing out where you start seeing metal. As long as there's all plastic up, up to the plug, you should be good. There's P64. I'm going to start plugging all these back in. 563 here. There's P63, 62, 61, and I'm going to go ahead and just write down the line and do these here. There's P5. This is the P4 was right there. Again, you can check the board. If they're on the board, the numbers, and they should be on these plugs. That's 32. So that's, there's 33. Here's 34. So it's next. 34, 33. This one, the red one's 32, 31, and so there's a good example right there. That that one backed out on you, so you got to check all those. And I'm going to pause right here, and I'm going to show you what you need to do if one of them back out. Okay, this is a, all you need is a razor blade, and this is a P2. And I'm going to, it might not be a good, bad idea to just slight, lightly tug on, on these wires to make sure none of them come out before you plug them in. But as you can see, one of them came out, and there's a little little hinge there like sticks up to, that's supposed to catch inside here and not let it come out once it snaps into place and it's obviously not quite high enough so I'm going to turn to the side hopefully you can kind of see it there it's kind of flat so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick the razor under it 
and try to bend it up a little bit. Just like, you know, twist it, twist the thing up and bend it up, get it under as far as it'll go and then kind of bend it up. Just lightly, just enough to get it to, I don't know if you can see it there, but it's, it's right there. It's that little, little bitty tab that sticks up there and that's a lock. It just locks in on these things. Now, all you gotta do is slide it back in if it came out. And it should, you should, here it should feel it or snap in place a little bit. I didn't even feel it, but it's, you can see it snapped in place now. And you can see those little things. They're right there. They go in those slots and that little thing locks in right there. So it might not be a bad idea just to tug on each one of these little wires lightly. Just make sure these things are not backing out like that one did. Now that you get this one here, again, check your posts. Make sure you get them all in or you don't miss any of those posts. And here's the last one on this front. And now all we gotta do is get these back in. Let's take a second here. Okay, the last thing you do is, is these wires here. And again, they're just in order. Number one is gonna go first. This will be number one post. And basically these prongs, there's the screw, but there's also a square metal piece there. And you gotta go under the square metal piece. Not just under the, the screw itself, but under, there's a square metal piece. That's, if you need to, you can loosen it up a little bit. And to get under that square metal, and just kind of get these, one thing you might wanna do is get these backed off a little bit. These little numbers. Make sure you don't break them or anything. Once you get it under the square piece, then you can snug tight it down. And I'm just going to do that and go on down the line with two, three, four, five, six, seven. Again, that's just a spacer. There's nothing there. This will be eight, and that will be nine. Okay, I've got the eight in. The last one is nine. On this eight and nine one, a lot of times this thing here, this it's over here to the side. This thing is the capacitor for the paper clamp. And it's, as you can see, it goes right into these wires with, with this. So it's a double wire into this. Sometimes they do it this way. Sometimes they're separate. So if there is separate wires on this thing, if you had a double wire where you pulled out, you just got to know the 8 and 9 goes where they go. The other two wires on this capacitor basically goes, this is the front of the capacitor with the writing on it, faces the board. The one on, the, the one on this, this side over here, the top side, will go to the top board, number 9. This one here will go to number eight. So that's simple if they're separate. A lot of times they're together on this and, lot, and sometimes they're separate, just so you know. If they're together, no big deal. You can just put them in. If they are separate, you got, usually put this one in first under it and these two on top of it. In this case, they're together, so I'm just putting these in. There, there's nothing separate about it. So, and then just go down and make sure they're all snug tight. Go down the line, make, check all your, um, your wires here, make sure they're all plugged in correctly. This will be a, a missed one here, you, nothing there or there. And that's basically it. You gotta put this, basically just feed your, make sure your wires are all fed in there. None of them are like on top of this stuff. If you need to slip it in between these slots or bend one of these back to get wires out of it, like these here, that one's bent down, the wires are out of it, they're bent on both sides there, so it goes down to that channel there. They should be fed into these channels here, these slots, and all completely out of the way down into these channels. And that way you can snap this on the top here. Otherwise you won't want to pinch any wires. So just make sure they're all down in their slots. Or these tabs are bent down and you can lay it on top of them like these two. And basically once that you can just lay it on top and push it down to snap it into place. And that will cover your, th your um, wires. Again, then just go over everything. Make sure everything's snug tight. All your screws, all these screws, all these plugs are pushed in nice and straight up and down. Not leaning out halfway or make sure none of these wires backed out on any of these plugs. And just check them all one at a time. Once you're sure everything looks good, double double check and confirm everything looks good and all the wires are on good, you can go ahead and put this back on. It should be the shinier side. You can see that's the bottom. It's got the recess holes on them. It'll be the top. And you just start here and just slide this back into place. It will, it usually hits this piece here, so you just lift it up a little bit here and slide on top of it. It could possibly be tight on this. If it is, you can remove the two side screws on each side of this crown. And just lift it up slightly so it slides under. But a lot of times, you don't, most time, you don't have to do that. Mine's loose, so I'm just going to do it. I'm going to lift it up slightly and push it. Usually, it'll just slide under there, nice and tight up against it. But for some reason, you can't get it past the edge of this crown. You can take the screws out of both sides of the crown and, and lift it up a little bit to help it slide under. From there, all you got to do is put these screws back in place, and you just want to do one at a time and get them all all six started. They should go in easy, two or three turns each. Don't tighten them down yet. And once you get all of them started, the reason why you just want to start them and not tighten them down is because some of these holes may just be a hair off on alignment. So when you don't tighten anything up, you got play this way, and you got you usually have a little bit of play the other way. 
back and forth and up and down to where you can line up any hole if it's not precisely lined up and you can't get the screw started. So once all six are started, then you can tighten all six back down. And that's basically it. Um, once you get all those um, tightened down, you should be good. You can plug it back in and, and test your cutter. This video was published by mbkpinternational.com.